And joining me now on Skype to offer his analysis of last night's vice presidential debate and the state of play surrounding the upcoming presidential debate is Ramesh Panuru, visiting fellow at American Enterprise Institute. Ramesh, thanks so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Let's begin with last night's vice presidential debate. Definitely a difference in tone there from the first presidential debate, but still many deflected questions or ones that actually went unanswered by both Vice President Pence and Senator Kamala Harris. What moments stood out the most to you, and how do you think the candidates fared? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on EWTN, Tracy. I think that you hit the nail on the head. This was a debate that was marked by evasion, by refusals to answer the question. I think the traditional role of a vice presidential candidate is, first of all, to avoid doing harm to the presidential candidate. And that, I think, was taken so much to heart by these candidates that, when in doubt, they just ducked the question. I do think that the uh, a few of these exchanges, though, were particularly revealing. And one was the continued reluctance of the Democratic ticket to offer a candid and straightforward answer about whether they plan to pack the Supreme Court if they have the opportunity to do it. Biden was pressed on it in the presidential debate, wouldn't answer. Harris was pressed on it in the vice presidential debate, wouldn't answer either. This is the simplest thing in the world to do if you don't have any intention of trying to pack the court. You just say, no, we're not going to do that. Ramesh, in your opinion, was either party, were they able to use last night to gain any traction with voters? And do you think the debate moved the needle at all? You know, vice presidential debates rarely tell us much about how an election is going to go. They don't tend to move voters all that much. Um, so I doubt that there's anything that's going to stand out in this case to make it change that rule. Frankly, I don't think that either candidate had the sort of epic disaster or victory that you'd require for it to really move the needle. Yeah, I want to focus now on the coronavirus for just a moment. It's a factor is, you know, both a campaign issue as well as a practical matter of how these campaigns move forward. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the immediate question is whether there's going to be another debate. Uh, I think that having that next debate is much more in the president's interest than in Biden's interest because Trump is down in the polling of the country and in the polling of most of the key states. Trump is the one who needs the opportunity. At the same time, neither side wants to have the blame for shutting down the debate. And I think right now what's happening is Trump is denying himself the opportunity to have that debate, and he's taking the blame for canceling it. So I think he needs to change that dynamic. There is still time to do so. Ramesh, there's been talk, you know, about, you know, moving the debate. What kind of impact would that have on voters moving it closer to Election Day? Well, it depends. You know, one of the things that makes this election different from previous elections is the extent to which the voting is happening before Election Day. The later the debate is, the more of the votes are going to have been cast before it happens. I just think that, again, if you are the candidate who is behind, it, it's in your interest to move it earlier so that there's more chance of affecting a greater number of votes. Ramesh, any final thoughts uh, as we wrap up this interview about the debates and the election? Donald Trump has consistently had the support of a passionate minority of the electorate and the opposition of a majority of the electorate. He still has a chance to turn it around, but time is getting shorter by the day. Ramesh, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Ramesh Panuru, visiting fellow at American Enterprise Institute. Thank you again for your time. You're welcome.